Using math games is my favorite way to keep students engaged and practicing those math skills. After math concepts are taught, students really just need time practicing those skills. So games are a great way to give students that practice without it being another worksheet. Welcome back, I'm Rachel Vincent, and I love sharing ways to help teachers simplify their classrooms and their teaching. So one of my favorite math games to play is headbands. So if you haven't ever heard of headbands, it's a game where you put a headband around your head and there is typically like a picture or a phrase and the other person is trying to get the person who's wearing it to guess the object by giving them clues. So I get little headbands from the Dollar Tree and then I love the fact that I get to decide what skill is going to go on the card. So a real simple one is to put a answer to a multiplication product. So for instance, if you use 45, Five, then the person given the clue sees the 45 and has to think about how to get the person wearing it to say 45. So they can give a multiplication fact, they could say it's a multiple of five, they can give all different clues. And so I love the fact that the person who is giving the clues is having to think about it. And the person receiving clues is also having to think about it. So they are both fully engaged in practicing that concept. It's great with fractions where they can give equivalent fractions or an addition or subtraction equation that gets to that answer. It's great for geometry terms, you could really use it for lots of different things. A great game that doesn't require a whole lot of setup is a snowball fight. So you just need scraps of piece of paper and then the student is going to write a problem on it or you could predetermine and choose the problems yourself and crumble it up and of course have a 30 second snowball fight where students are just throwing the snowballs across the room at each other and then they pick up the one of the snowballs and have to solve the problem. Now make sure because I've made this mistake before you have them solve the problem on a separate piece of paper because if they do it on the snowball it's you can't redo it because somebody has already solved the problem. But then crumble back up, toss again, find a new one, and just you're repeating a bunch of different. This is a great way to take a worksheet that you wanted to use and make it a little more engaging. And definitely in fourth grade, and I know as students get older, they start to have math concepts that have lots of steps to the problem before they can even get to the answer. So one of the ways to make that a little bit more fun and a little more engaging is to do relay races, where you divide your team up or your class up into as many teams as you want, and then each person in that team solves one step of the problem. So for instance, if it is adding and subtracting mixed numbers, the first student would take the problem that's written horizontally and write it vertically. The next student would add the whole numbers. The next student would add the fraction. Then that next student would have to change the fraction to an change the improper fraction to a mixed number. And then the next student would have to add the mixed number plus the whole number to get the final answer. And so it works well. It kind of gives that sort of competition feel to things. It works great with things like word problems, long division, any kind of concept, even area model with multiplication, any kind of concept that requires several steps to happen before you get to your final answer. I love using Jenga tumbling blocks, especially before we are about to take a unit assessment where we want to make sure we are practicing all the things we've learned in the unit because I have the colored blocks and you could easily take a wooden set and just color in or paint the end so you still have that concept. And then each color is a different skill that we've learned in the unit. So we do this a lot with our fraction unit where one color is going to be adding fractions, another color is going to be subtracting fractions, another color will be finding an equivalent fraction, another color will be simplifying fractions. You can do that with lots of different things. I really love it because it adds, again, they're practicing that skills, they're reviewing, they're getting that practice in, but then they're also playing the game of Jenga, which just adds that level of engagement. Really, you could turn any sort of task cards or worksheet into a game. You just simply give the task card or worksheet as usual, but as students finish a question or a problem on the task card or worksheet, then they 
participate or take a turn in the game. An easy way to do that is with like four in a row where the student solves the problem, then they get to use a color dry erase and put a dot on the four in a row board. And so the other student is solving problems and putting theirs in two. And so it's not necessarily a matter of you can only win the game if you got a problem right, but it's really just sort of you practicing and then whoever can get four in a row, it, there's still that strategy gameplay involved in it so that even if you aren't moving as fast as your partner, you can still be able to block them when you do finally get your answer. So there's just sort of that easy aspect of taking what you're already using and adding a little bit of game play to it. I have several of these math games available for you in my TPT store to make it even easier to plan. Grab those links down in the description below. And if you want some games that you can put into any content area, check out the video that's on your screen now.